This is part two of the lecture that I broke into two parts because it turned out to be longer than I wanted it to be. So now when we run our game, the teddy bear moves and then collides with the collider and he's drifting along a little bit there. So we kind of have a problem here. We have these colliders, but they have characteristics. Colliders are conceptually, anyway, made of a particular physics material that has characteristics. So let's actually add physics materials to both the edge colliders and the teddy bear collider. To do that, I'm going to come over here to the project window. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder materials. And I'm going to add two materials to it. So I'm going to create a physics material 2D. Remember with the 2D engine, everything we're doing in physics has 2D on it. So a physics material 2D, and I will call this edge material. And if you come over here to the inspector, you can see that edge material has some friction and no bounciness. And that's why the teddy bear didn't bounce off the edges of the screen because there's no bounciness to the edge colliders. So I'm going to make these edge colliders frictionless with lots of bounciness. I'm also going to add a material for the teddy bear. And while teddy bears aren't actually bouncy, I'm going to make this teddy bear bouncy. So also frictionless and bouncy. Okay, now that does not affect anything yet because here in the teddy bear, you can see in the box collider 2D component, there's no physics material 2D there. So the way I apply that physics material 2D is I come over here and I drag the teddy bear material onto that box. So now that box collider has the teddy bear material associated with it. In the main camera, I'll do the same with all my edge colliders and of course I'll have to expand them. So for each of them, I will drag the edge material onto the material for that collider. And that applies that material to that collider. So I'll do the rest of them and come back. So now when I run the game, we'll see that the teddy bear actually bounces off those edge colliders. And given that we can see the teddy bear bouncing off conceptually the walls of the game world, you should go do an in-video quiz about bouncing off the walls. Now, what's really happening here is the physics engine built into Unity is detecting those collisions between colliders. And once it's detected those collisions, it's resolving those collisions by changing the velocity of the teddy bear appropriately. So we have two things going on there. We have collision detection and we have collision resolution. So you should go do an in-video quiz about collision detection. And now you should do an in-video quiz about collision resolution. Now it turns out that we might want to have some other collision resolution that we do in addition to letting the physics engine do its thing. For example, we might want to damage the teddy bear slightly every time he bounces off a wall or something like that. Or he might gain points because he's bouncing off the walls. That's a pretty easy way to increment your score. So we would like to be able to also do collision resolution within our script. Now that we want to do that, this mover script is no longer the appropriate name, so I want to change its name to Teddy Bear because it's going to have more behavior than just moving around. You'll notice when I select the Teddy Bear game object, it says the associated script cannot be loaded, so we have to go fix some stuff in our script before this will work properly. So let's open up the teddy bear script. And the issue is that we changed the name of the teddy bear CS file, but the class name is still mover. And Unity really doesn't like that. 
So I'm going to change that to Teddy Bear. And now back in Unity, the editor is happy again. So back in the script, we know that the physics engine will detect that collision. We would like a method to get called here when that happens. And the way you would discover what method would get called would be to go read the mono behavior documentation. This script does something called inherit from the mono behavior script. And we will talk about inheritance in a couple of courses. But the bottom line is all the methods that are available in mono behavior are available in our teddy bear class as well. So let's go look at that documentation. I will search on mono behavior. And instead of just going to the mono behavior class here, I see this method right here that sent when an incoming collider makes contact with this objects collider, which basically means that when there's a collision, this method gets called. So I'm going to just copy this because this is the appropriate method signature here at the top over into my code. Called on a collision. I'll just change this comment to say collision info. And of course, we don't want to do this stuff right here. I'm going to just make the teddy bear say ouch. So when the teddy bear collides with something, he will say ouch. So the collision detection part is handled by the physics 2D engine. And when it detects a collision, it will call this method. The collision resolution piece is whatever code we put inside the body of this method. And in this particular case, our collision resolution will be printing out. The physics engine still works fine. It still does the collision resolution to bounce the teddy bear. This is additional stuff that we can do when a collision occurs. So now when we run the game, every time the teddy bear hits one of those edge colliders, he says, ouch. So that's how we can use colliders and physics 2D materials to get collision detection and resolution working with the physics engine and to use the physics engine collision detection to do our own additional collision resolution. To recap, we learned today that if we attach 2D colliders to our game objects, the 2D physics engine in Unity will do collision detection for us. And if we attach the appropriate physics materials to those colliders, the 2D physics engine in Unity will do collision resolution for us from a physics perspective. We also discovered that we can do additional collision resolution on our own in response to collisions that have been detected in our game.